Well, welcome back to 7th grade painting. Uh, we're closing in on the end of this project, uh, if you can believe that. Uh, so, uh, here we are back with our watercolor kit again, starting at re yeah, red on the left, of course, and working until we got to black on the far right side. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to leave this down here where you can see uh, pretty much what colors I'm using there, I suppose. And um, then we're going to try to, it, today when we left off at the last session, we had started painting in the ends of the buildings, the gables. That would be these portions of the roofs here. Same over here. Now there, uh, you can paint these in any color you want. You can follow the colors I'm using if you so desire. That's not necessary, but you can if you'd like to. And uh, once we complete that, we are going to uh, do the detailing, you know, the cars and the alleyways, all the windows and dressings and stuff done, trash cans if there are those types of things. Because uh, in the next session, I would like to do some work where we are going to start uh, making the clouds and the outside edge of the tunnel and the sidewalks as well. So uh, we do have plans for this. It should take a couple more sessions to get it all the way done. I would make sure that that brush that you're using is clean since uh, you are taking group lessons and to be honest uh, you need to really keep that paint kit clean for your uh, classmate that may be using it in the class behind you or, or next. Okay let's get going here so um, when I left off yesterday of course I had done this uh, end of the building in brown and you have to pick out colors that are not some other color which they touch so on the next one for instance or perhaps we'll go over here because that will be easier but in this one it can't be of course black it can't be purple and it can't be red so it can be any other color except black purple and red uh, it could be any color besides those so I think what I'm going to do with this, the um, I think I will go with something uh, a little pretty vivid. Uh, it can't be black, can't be purple, can't be red. I really am getting tired of looking at green all the time. So I'm going to make it blue. And then that will kind of match this blue down here and pick it up, up there. So that's not a bad idea. Uh, sometimes I fascinate myself with my brilliant decision making. Now this uh, blue could be pretty strong, but when we first start working at the first of the day, uh, what happens is usually the colors are a little bit darker uh, than they would be uh, after we've worked with the color kit for a while because it gets uh, diluted. Okay, that is coming on pretty strong there. Pretty nice though. Shows up brilliant on the camera and the projection screen. So. Now it's more important that you do good work uh, in a at a reasonable pace than it is to try to get done rapidly. Uh, watercolor is very unforgiving when you make mistakes with it. So if you're going to make mistakes, they should be mistakes that you make slowly, so that when you see them happening, or they do happen, you haven't got a tremendous fixed job on your hands. Sometimes mistakes are made that cannot be corrected. Uh, the watercolor is unforgiving because it stain, actually stains the paper. It can't be scraped off. It stains the paper and so that's why you have to proceed with extraordinary caution when you're working with watercolor. Now if you want a variegated approach, if you are trying to do like water or clouds or the sky, then uh, you know you would kind of use a, a soggy brush. And we will be uh, investigating that approach here when we get to uh, working on the clouds. And uh, if your project looks like mine, the uh, the smoke that would be coming from the Pete's place across the street there. Okay, so when um, this portion is done, the, the gable ends of the roofs, then we're going to uh, address the details in this painting, but probably this painting has no more than oh, two, maybe two more sessions after the one we're in. Okay, so we got to keep that watercolor kind of moving around a bit so that we can get the same color 
throughout the area that we are filling in right now. And that's accomplished by once that color is melted, you can keep moving it around for a while. And that's where you get these really good control marks right there. All right, that looks pretty good. It looks like it was meant to be there, if you ask me. Okay, I'm going to rinse out my brush and dry it completely. And I'm going to go back across the street now to the Wright State University Student Services Division, and where I worked back in 1986. Now, by the time we're done with all this, uh, a lot of this lettering uh, will be gone over with a uh, fine line uh, magic marker, uh, probably a felt tip with a fine point to make all those letters kind of pop out. Uh, we're not, the amount of control it would take with these tiny brushes, and we really just don't, this brush is not small enough to do that job. Okay, let's go over here. Now, this is an interesting situation because Wright State University is not a, it's not purple, it's actually green and yellow are their colors. And so I am going to go green, yellow, and green here in order to uh, stay true to Wright State University, my alma mater, by the way, where I went to college at, met my wife. Make sure your hands are clean. If they're not, or you are some paint may be wet, you better put down a something to protect it. So we're going to go green, yellow, and green. So we'll just paint this in green to start with. And see, it can be green because it's not black and it's not purple. And there's the, the cloud will be a grayish color eventually, but uh, it certainly isn't going to be that color either. And so the green. Wright State University, the Raiders. The mascot used to be uh, like a Viking. It's funny, and he looked like a Viking, but they called him Rowdy Raider. And uh, he was a beloved mascot. And then they got rid of Rowdy Raider, and they uh, replaced him with a. Oh, it looks like a wolf or a dog or something. Nobody really knows. I, so I, I'm shocked by that development. That happened many years ago now, but I'm still getting over it. I, I think Rowdy Raider was a, a good mascot. And I think they still call him Rowdy, but nobody knows what that means anymore because the, the Viking guy is gone. Alright, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip the middle one and go to the next one and paint it green as well, uh, representing the colors of Wright State University, where also my mother worked for over 20 years. Uh, I went to college for my undergraduate degrees in art and art history, and while I was there I also was a member of the ROTC program, and that is how I ended up with a commission I was made a second lieutenant in the Army. And then, when I got out of college in 1987, I had to go... I got out of college in 1986, however, by February of 1987, they sent me on active duty, where I went to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and began uh, my training as a Army engineer. So these people over here. Uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia is just outside of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is kind of a neat place, or it really was back then in the, uh, the mid to late 80s. It was pretty entertaining and you could actually walk inside of the Capitol building. I walked around inside the Capitol building numerous times unsupervised. Nobody was really bothering me. Let me just explore in there. You could not get away with that now. You'd be in big trouble if you tried that now. Uh, so I'd walk around and, you know, just check doors that looked like they went somewhere. And if it was unlocked, I went in and walked around and saw what it looked like there. Uh, it was really neat. We were able to go to Washington, D.C. almost every weekend if we chose to. 
Now, while <clears throat> I'm at this, what I'm going to do with these letters over here is they're going to go just the opposite. They're going to go yellow, green, yellow. So while I'm at it, I might just go ahead and paint in that center, uh, the S and state, at the right state university, in green. And then the yellow will go right over top of that and it will kind of mimic the colors of Wright State University. Which will used to be a very small university, ladies and gentlemen. Now it is really quite something else. It's not the tiny, the small school I went to. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to clean that brush out a bit and go to my yellow. And you'll know if you didn't clean your brush out because when you start using yellow, that's when all the pollution shows up. So I'm going to make sure my brush is dry. Pick up a, a little bit of water to melt some yellow here so it stays strong and uh, not runny too much. And then I'm going to paint in the middle of the gable, the middle gable. So this has been this a uh, project, and most projects take um, ten days. And so I believe we're on day number, I suppose number eight of this project. It seems to me, and uh, so in a couple more days we should have this finished out, and uh, that would meet the requirement of going about ten days at a time on projects. And so that would be. Uh, obviously fantastic use of our class time if we were able to make that happen. So now I'm back over here to the yellow again that I'm going to use in the Wright State University windows there. Alright, very good. And then also in the, the window closest to us there. do with it. I mean, I'm starting to kind of catch a, uh, an idea here that I might just complete this building here, at least the painting portion of it here, in just a moment, because using this whole, you know, yellow and green theory here, I can uh, pick up some more yellow, and I'm going to put it in, let's see... I want to put it in up here, which means that the one on the, the next one down will be uh, done in green, see? And also, violet and yellow are opposite colors, and so the purple on the front of this building and these, uh, this yellow is really jumping out there. Okay, so let's see. Here's something else I think I might do. This may sound crazy, but I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to paint my windows in of my doors yellow. And then the surrounding portion of them will be painted in green. Strong green. color work here. Okay, so what do I got to do? I kind of messed up there, but I'll make it work. What I needed to do was paint in the window. I painted in the surrounding. But since green is made out of yellow and blue, I should be able to paint right over that yellow with, uh, once it's dry. I'll have to wait till it's dry, and I'll go over it with green. That was a, a bit of a mistake, but not one that can't be fixed. So at least I'm making mistakes I can fix. Now I'm going to go to the green and do my uh, it says services division there. That's where my next sign is going to be. All 
right. And then we'll move on to another building uh, to uh, do the gable ends and keep on getting the, the details done as we go along because that's how a watercolor has to be done. We've got to keep going back and forth to uh, areas of the painting that are dry so that when we add uh, the color over top of it, it doesn't uh, run into out of control. So got to and we need to keep that yeah, keep that paint moving around. And try not to touch that darker violet paint with the wet brush or it will pollute that green. Okay, now that looks pretty good. We gotta move across the street now. We're gonna go to the United States Army Engineer Corps school. And uh, in this case, I don't know what I'm going to use in the top of that building. It can't be black, it can't be purple, it can't be brown, and it can't be orange. So that kind of limits my options, doesn't it? To um, maybe, can't be yellow because then my crane will disappear. Can't be orange, that means it's got to be red or green. And I'm kind of getting tired of green. It could be blue, but we've already got blue right here. So... Perhaps red. Red is the color of the uh, Army Corps of Engineers anyway. That's our official color. So I guess I'll go with the official color of the Army, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, our flags and our guidons, as they're called, are red. All right. So some strong red on the gable end here. I'll have to pick another color for that stripe on my roof, too. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that yet. But it can't be purple and it can't be black. So it's got to be some other color. Alright. So now this is going to require some careful work in this particular part of the painting as we uh, work around the, uh, the cloud and the crane or the a piece of heavy equipment that is, I guess, working inside that building there. We're built like an airplane hangar. Alright, so, yep, Army Corps of Engineers, they do a lot of stuff. They build dams and roads and bridges and uh, make sure that the Mississippi River is navigatable by uh, barges and other uh, watercraft that use it regularly as part of the U.S. commerce and also recreational use uh, on the Mississippi River as well. People fishing and uh, using it to actually travel. Uh, people who boat a lot, uh, it's one way for them to get out to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So the fact that uh, that that waterway is so vital, and it's not just that waterway. There are other, many other important waterways throughout the United States that are managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and its uh, employees, and uh, not just all military. There, are a lot of the Army Corps of Engineers has civilian employees as well that uh, support the entire operation. And they do to. Uh, make waterways of the United States navigable where possible and manage uh, water as a resource uh, so that it's not wasted, it's uh, put to good use. So things like hydroelectric dams or uh, some of their creations, uh, canals and lock systems. So. Well, I hope your project is coming along. Uh, at this time, you should really, by at the, this session, we should have mastered at least some level of control and uh, with our paint brushes and the amount of paint we need to use in order to make an attractive painting. I am going to have to move my paint so that I can avoid ruining my painting here. So I'm going to carefully paint around the piece of heavy equipment. It's a trencher is what it is. So cutting trenches. And digging holes. And that's what we did best was the Army Corps of Engineers was dug holes. We dug a lot of holes.
All right, I'm going to need a little more water, it looks like, here to keep my red paint working for me. It's trying to dry up on me, believe it or not. And you can't paint with watercolor if there's no water in it. There's one of those great ironies of art. Okay, I remember back when we first started this drawing, I was very apprehensive about the way I had this uh, this window in here that this uh, this trencher was hanging out of, but now it looks fine. I've gotten used to it, but at first I was really kind of concerned about the way that looked. Alright, we're just going to keep on keeping on. It looks like I'm going to successfully finish my... Uh, gable ends of my buildings here today and then I will be able to continue working on my detail work and so that's something that we just kind of each day really got to address in details and I was lucky enough there uh, on the Wright State Building across the street to be able to finish that up except for the doors where I kind of messed up but I'll be able to fix that and that's uh, something that happens when you get excited, when you get a good idea and you go with it immediately before thinking about it. Sometimes you got to go back and fix things you did. And, uh, that's what happens. It happens to me too. Alright, so. Now that, uh, the red has gone on a little bit light there, but, and it's kind of getting me a pinkish kind of a look, but that's okay too. Uh, as long as it's Seeable. All right. So that's looking pretty nice. I'm about ready, I think, to move on to the next portion of this. <coughs> um, I might just do just a little bit more touch-up work over in here because I really want to boost that color a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's see. Pull this back. Uh, the last uh, gable end there and the uh, uh, end of the street will be uh, the church or city hall or in my case Warner Middle School Art Department down there at the end. Uh, so I'm going to clean out my brush and I'm going to try to come up with a color for the uh, top portion of it that I haven't got, you know, used somewhere else. Uh, I could go with violet, but and I could go with yellow, so it can't be black, it can't be green, and it can't be brown. And uh, I'm kind of getting tired of the red. I just use that, and I'm really blue is, and I don't want it to be green. So that's kind of perplexing what I should do with that because I've got green and yellow in the building next door. So this is uh, one of those interesting uh, dilemmas you may find yourself in here when you make a painting. Uh, how to solve the problems of the project and still uh, get it to come out in a way that you really want. So I guess what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to rule out yellow. I'm going to go with orange because it has not been used on just only on the front of this building uh, but has not been used in any gable yet and so I'm going to use orange and I'm going to mix it up pretty strong so that I get a dense orange then I'm going to put that right here on the It's funny because many, many years ago, when I was young, Warner Middle Schools, or Warner Junior High at the time, as it was known, their colors were green and white. And uh, Xenia Central was green, was blue and white. And so. Uh, the or uh, the Warner was the Falcons, 
and central was the box. So I always thought that was funny. And then they eventually brought the two middle schools together. And uh, I believe sometime in the 90s is when they decided to change both middle schools' names to the Bucks. Didn't matter which uh, school you were in. And then eventually uh, the middle schools were merged and were all Bucks now. Okay, what do I want to do with this? Now my steeple can't be brown, it can't be orange, it can't be black, and it could be green, but I think I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to make it violet. Because this is an art project. Why not? So get my violet, mix it up pretty strong. And then, oop, that's really nice. It should show up pretty good against that brown. I'm using very light pressure and only the pointiest, finest, pointiest portion of the brush. of my breath in order to steer this paint around in a careful manner. Having come this far with this project, I'm not inclined to mess it up now. that dry and that looks pretty good. That's distinguishable back in there against the the uh, brown and the greens as well. So I'm going to clean my brush out. Now I've got to go back and fix up my um, Wright State University Student Services Division where I messed up but that's going to be easily done because I'm going to use the green and I'm going around and outlining just very carefully my edges of my doors. should be able to paint over this yellow quite easily with the green. Green is made from yellow and blue, so sometimes if you make a mistake, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Other times you make a mistake and you got real problems on the pages. Okay, so that was kind of a neat idea to be able to uh, make a mistake right there in front of the students and show how it can be corrected. So sometimes education happens. Okay, so looks like the Wright State University detail work is done. Uh, while I'm uh, at it, I'm going to get some more of this green and do some work on my stained glass window, maybe this one right here. 
I don't know, I put two greens in the same row. That's alright. The whole reason it's uh, in the middle like this is because I'm going to also paint around the outer edge of this window. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put. Uh, I'm going to put a, a yellow in here. Right here. Uh, I get some yellow on that brush would be helpful, wouldn't it? There we go. That's nice and bright. there. Now the question is, what color to paint all of the area that's around the window? And uh, the irony is that it's uh, got to be probably brown, I'm going to say, uh, because it can't be any of the colors that would uh, touch the... Uh, it can't be... So, yeah, it looks like it's going to have to probably be brown, I suppose. So, uh, and that's okay too because, you know, we've got some brown in there. It all, and pizza's, you know, brown crust on the pizza, so it's not like it's a bad thing. So, I'm going to get some of the, my brown and I'm going to melt it there and I'm going to carefully uh, go back around this area right here. Now, your, our spots surrounding your window here it doesn't have to be brown. Okay, it could be any color that is not a color which touches it. And see, that's what makes it tough on the uh, stained glass window. So if I wasn't trying to use every color in my stained glass window, I could have just used two colors. And then I could have uh, picked out some other color to go in the area that surrounds my stained glass window. So, because I chose to go with a lot of colors, I kind of set myself up for this to happen to me. But um, you know, sometimes when you're making a piece of artwork, and you just discover stuff as you go, it doesn't necessarily, you can't always plan, and I'm big on planning, but you can't always plan on every potential thing that could happen. So, uh, that, that moment of discovery, or when you make a mistake, sometimes you know it's severe, other times you know it's not so bad, and you can fix it. So, and that's all just a matter of experience. It's not really, uh, it doesn't represent an I, it, whether or not you're a good artist or not. It simply is, uh, did, did you learn from that particular mistake that you made? And so, because you will probably make it again at some point in time in the future. So, when you encounter that situation again in the future, in art or in anything for that matter, in your life, Will you be able to then respond to it so that you know nothing? The outcome is not completely detrimental. So can you minimize the harm of the outcome when you make a mistake in art or in life? Or sometimes you can convert it. You, know, you can turn it into something, as Bob Ross always said in his videos: happy accidents. You know. Something happens, and you find a way to uh, turn it into something that looked intentional, and uh, and then you also learn that you that's possible to turn it around sometimes when you make a mistake. So I feel like we'll probably be able to bring this painting to its end in probably two more sessions. I'm, I'm can kind of I'm seeing from the progress that's being made at this time. Uh, now I do paint. Some people say I paint really fast. Other people say I paint really slow. I I don't know. I like to paint as fast as I can paint and still get good results. But. Um, you know, when we've got deadlines looming out there, and we are nearly at the end of the quarter. If we're this far along in a painting by now, we're far into the quarter. So we 
got to be wrapping this up, the whole, not just the painting, but the unit, and also uh, the uh, project as well, and uh, we're going to have to do some grades as well, and, you know, there's things to be done. Okay, so let's see, we got to move on here. We're running out of detail work. I might work on that van a little bit, or maybe this dumpster right there in front of me. That dumpster right there, I'm going to make that dumpster red. I'm going to make it really red if I can get some red in this stuff here. Oh yeah, there we go. And whatever it is that's running out of it, I'm going to make that some sort of green and yellow, maybe mixed together. So I'll show you how that's going to happen here in a minute. So this side is going to be red, but the side... Ooh, there's the dinger. That means we're about out of time, so... I will, um fix up the front of my dumpster right here real quick and then paint the door in as well so probably what I'll do here first is paint that door and let this side of this dry for a moment uh, so get my brush cleaned dried off I'm going to use some black for the door of course because it's a dumpster door dumpster lid on a hinge and if you don't use too much black as you spread it around, you will notice it kind of turns a grayish color. And then you can kind of see through it when we decide to detail it. And you put like the lines on it that show that there's flies or odors coming up out of your dumpster. And if I can just get that to level out, I'd be so happy. Okay, now just bring it on down there. It's in front of some trash. There's some trash, excuse me, in front of us in that dumpster lid. Okay, very good. Let's get that all touched in there carefully. Now, on the front of the dumpster, because the dumpster is in an alleyway, the front of the dumpster should be shadowed. Since I've got some black already in my brush, I am going to just touch it into the black. And we're going to see, we're going to do a little bit of risky wet into wet painting here. you got to be brave. If you're not, let it dry, and we'll come back to it. Okay, so I've got that, just that darker area right in there, and I'm going to get just a tiny, tiny bit of the red. I'm going to try to work that in over top of that black, and it should look darker slightly, because I'm painting it on a black surface, or a gray surface at least. And I can put that right up next to that green, because that part of the that is dry, but I have to keep that microscopic space in between it and the red, because the red may still be a little bit wet. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Let's tuck that all together there real quick. And I think I'll take some black again real quick and put it on my, top, my wheels of my dumpster there. Roll it out into the street when it's time to clean it up. Okay, well, I think that's enough for today's session. Let's uh, look at what we've done. We made progress down the street. The gable ends are all done. Did some detail work. Tomorrow, or the next session when we get back, we'll uh, continue uh, working the details and also take the next step, which is to start working with some black and gray. So, it's been a good session. Thanks for your attention. Have a nice day.